Um, okay, so um, let's take a look at an example of first-hand learning experiences. Um, uh, this is another of my favorites. <laughs> See, what they're trying to do is pound a nail without a hammer, right? And then with a simple machine, the hammer, uh, they find that it's a lot easier to, to uh, pound the nail. Um, okay, now they go and get a simple machine. about it. Okay, but where's your, where's your first one? Aha, that's with your hand. Okay, now then you're just going to remark underneath each one, where did you use the most energy? Okay. My muscles. Well, was it more energy for you with using your hands? Was it easier with the tool? Were you it was using... easier with the tool. Okay, so I need to know that. I need to know which one made your work easier. Uh, Which one, one? Where did you use less oh, energy? Okay. okay, and then there's stop button comments on that, and you can also index the other components and whatnot. A secondhand experience is a demonstration of some sort. Firsthand is actually, you know, hammering or doing something like that. Uh, a secondhand experience is, is, is a demonstration, and... Um, this is uh, a demonstration that shows that matter occupies space. And thematically across the year, we started with matter and characteristics of matter, change of state of matter from solid to liquid to gas, and then uh, uh, energy and motion topics on the way to past simple machines, ultimately to the roller coaster. Um, and what that teaches about is the distinction between kinetic and potential energy at, at the end of the year. But this is early in the year, and the, the big idea here is matter occupies space. Is there space between the water? No, right? There's water all around, right? Yeah. Okay. Except can go in water. Is there space between the blobs? Look, is there space between yeah. the gloves? There is? There's tiny holes. You're right, there's tiny holes. So let's see what happens. We're going to do it a little bit at a time so we can see what happens. Pour rocks and sand into this beaker. Wait. What's happening? It's sinking. What's sinking? Rocks. What else is happening? It's Look. moving space through the... Yeah, the sand's going up. It looks like it's going up. The sand's going up. Because otherwise you'd see more of the rock. Remember how Leon said there's little spaces between the pebbles? Yeah, what is that's the, what I did. What is the sand doing? Going in it. Going in it. It's occupying the space. Bit, that was between, this. and what's happening to what was in between, what was in those little holes between the pebbles? Glass. What was in those little holes? Glass? What do you yeah. think? Yeah. And what is the sand doing? It's moving the air to fill the space in between the marbles. Let's try the water. Chelsea is going to be our finger meter. She is going to measure. Put your finger right there, Chelsea. At the line of the water. Move over a little bit. Okay? At the line of the water. Right there. Okay? And we are going to see 
what happens when we put in our gloves. Ready? The locks are on the thing. What happened? Don't move your finger, Chelsea. Don't move it. What's happening? The locks are sinking because Why? the locks are too heavy. Now I want you, I want you to see light. Chelsea's finger and what's happening. What's getting bigger? The water. The word, I like what you're thinking. Bigger. It's getting higher. Está subiendo, ¿verdad, Alexis? Here we go. Okay. The, you know, the thoroughness of that kind of a demonstration is, is something that's... Uh, um, a video clip clip can show, and uh, here's some stopping points. Is there points. space between the water? No, right? There's water all around, right? Okay. Okay, the teacher gathers the children for a second-hand experience, which helps make the science concepts more memorable, because they can see the way the physical principles play out. Is there space between the blocks? The teacher asks lots of questions to engage children's attention and focus the experience on the concepts.